Hi everybody, hope you are all doing well. Today I wanted to bring you kind of a glam makeup look, just something very classic, something that just looks like beautiful, glowy, kind of fresh skin with a really pretty kind of smoky eye. I am gonna use the Naked Cherry palette today because I wanna kind of play off of some of this deep kind of rosiness um, and the beautiful kind of more so cherry tones within this palette. Um, but yeah, I just kind of want to have fun, do this look, and enjoy some classic glam here today. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with my eyes, as I always do. For most of my looks, I usually always start from my eyes because start with my eyes because I usually end up using a decent amount of shadow. This girl here is a shadow fiend. She loves her shadow. Um, I just have always been a fan of shadow, so I'm going through and priming up my lids with some Milani eyeshadow primer. This girl loves herself some eyeshadow, so I'm going through priming up my lids so that they are all ready for some eyeshadow. I always do my shadow first, or almost always. If I don't, then it's a very, very simple, simple look that I'm creating. Uh, so today is just a very classic kind of glam look. So it's going to be a little bit smoky, but really just kind of pretty bright and hopefully simple. So today I'm first gonna go in with the color Hotspot, which is our lightest within the shade or within the palette. And I'm just gonna go right under the brow and just kind of bring that down into the transition area. Just get some highlight. And I'm not gonna be looking for any crazy amount of uh, kind of color or saturation. I do want some bit of kind of this pinky tone, which is why I picked this palette. Also Naked 3 is really beautiful. It's not as kind of vibrant of pink colors. It's a bit more kind of on that Movi Mavi uh, Spain, what am I trying to say? Movi Mavi space, I guess. That wasn't the word, but something like that. So I'm just going under and kind of adding a little bit of this right underneath my brow. Then I'm going to go into the color Feels, which is kind of our more mauve kind of toned um, matte shade within here. And it's more of a deeper shade. Juicy is the other one that we have within here, but it's a little bit more pink. I want one um, that's a little bit more kind of plummy, purpley, pinky. I know. I'm a great, great girl at describing shades. But I'm just going in kind of my transition area and into the crease and just buffing in a little bit of that color. All right, now I have that little bit of pink kind of all throughout here. And I do really think that's a very pretty color. It's easy to work with and I think would work with a lot of really different skin tones. Um, now I kind of wonder if I wanna bring a little bit of Juicy in right on the edge here to kind of brighten it up just a little. Now I need to go into a bit more of a defined crease brush. So I have, I guess I can use this. This is just a MAC 217. Um, I'm gonna go into Devilish, which is a bit deeper of kind of like a red Bordeaux color. Tap some on and then just tap it right into this crease area. It's okay going over some of my lid. It's kind of what I want on this outer kind of portion. So just kind of bring in some of that color and then we will blend it out. And I don't want it to be too, too dark because I just don't want it to be something that like looks super nighttime or super vampy. I want it to be kind of an in-between. So I'm still going to go in and add a little bit more of Devilish, but then we're going to play with some of the shimmer here and see what we want to kind of brighten up the inner part of the lid with. So what I think I'm going to do to just add in a little bit of depth, if I can find the right brush. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Drunk Dial, which is kind of like our deepest shimmer, which you could probably also use as a matte shade because there isn't a whole lot of shimmer to it. Just kind of add it to the outer third of my lid here, just to give a bit more depth, but we'll kind of blend over this whole area with a different shimmer anyway. <music> 
Now I'm gonna go with the color Ambitious and put that kind of over what I just placed, but also kind of about to the halfway point onto the lid. Then I'll also blend out that outer crease area. All right, now we're gonna go into Turn On, which is kind of our brightest shade, I think, within here. And add that shimmer all throughout here. So then you can see it's a very easy, kind of simple, smoky eye, but very kind of easy, glam, just simple. I, I don't want to create anything too, too deep here. Um, if you wanted to make it a little bit more pinky, you could probably go into Young Love and tap that more over. And Young Love almost looks like a bit duochrome -y. a little bit. I can tap that over, add a little bit of pink back into the look. And then perhaps what I might do is go along the outer border, tap between feels and juicy, and just kind of rebuild out that transition creasy area. Very easy. Good. So now we have to work on our face. Now, when you are doing something for kind of like a special occasion, I usually try to make the skin look quite flawless. I'm not as much into that look anymore. I don't mind if kind of acne spots or freckles or whatever come through. I'm usually pretty good with that these days. Um, but for something that's super important, I probably, I guess, would want to have something that is a bit more fuller coverage. So before I go into a fuller coverage foundation, I'm actually going to go into a color corrector. And this is to just help cancel out kind of all the green, blue veininess um, that I have underneath my eyes. So I really enjoy this LA Girl Pro Conceal, um, and this is the Peach Corrector. So I just put some right under my eye here. And anywhere else that you think is kind of green or blue that might need some of that peachy corrector. And then I'm just going to tap and blend in the corrector. Another step that I kind of glossed over is priming. And priming can really help to kind of add a little bit of stickiness to your base so that you can really, you know, have your product last a little longer, which is also usually essential for kind of special occasion makeup. I did not put one on today, but something that depending on what you need could always be helpful. Something that hopefully is a little bit more long lasting or if you want something a little bit pore filling, I guess I probably could add a little bit onto my nose if I can find it. Here, I'll just go for some poreless putty primer. Um, now this one, remember to kind of wait 30 seconds um, before you add foundation. I'm just gonna kind of add it over some pore areas, probably my nose and into my forehead a bit. All right. Now, as that kind of settles into the skin, I am going to make a little bit of a concoction for my uh, foundation because I do want to have my foundation be a bit glowy. I am probably more so a combo skin than anything, but probably more dry these days. So I'm going to use my Maybelline um, 24 hour Super Stay. I really like this foundation. This was kind of my ride or die before I really started using CoverGirl Skin Milk. I really like Skin Milk. It's a lot lighter. Um, sometimes I get some weird pilling and I'm not sure if that's because I'm using it with a sponge or certain primers that I'm wearing, but I still really like that one for kind of the light coverage that it has. Um, but this is a great kind of, you can make this full coverage if you want to. But what I'm going to do is actually take this, take a pump of it, and put it onto the back of my hand. I'm then going to add in the high, um, the Ojai uh, illuminator drops that I've really been enjoying because I really want my skin to be very fresh, very dewy, and I just want it to look beautiful. You know, I just want it to look like happy, bright skin. So I'm just going to do a pump maybe two of the foundation on the back of my hand. 
and you don't obviously have to use all of it if you pump out too much but then i'm going to add in and this is a very thick foundation compared to something like skin milk then i'm going to go in and i added in some of this ohi illuminator and i'm just going to kind of mix it on the back of my hand and then i'm just going to dot this all over the face and you can start with one amount and if i need to add more i got more on my hand blend it out don't forget your neck. Now I did not end up using all of the product, so wiping the rest off of my hand here, but I just love how the skin looks at this point. It is very fresh looking, very dewy, um, and obviously if you are an oily girl, don't add that in and use a, you know, foundation that doesn't help to create a dewy kind of shiny look. Now I need to go in with some concealer. I love my Age Rewind concealer, so I'm going to use that today. I think it gives great coverage without making the under eye feel heavy. <laughs> Now I still have a little bit of blue, but it should look okay once I put the powder over. Um, if you don't have like a Lori, Lori, a Laura Mercy A, try using like a Fit Me powder, um, something like that, that will really help to get rid of any kind of creasing. But one thing I am kind of wondering if I should do is go in with a blush. Now, I don't want blush to be super overpowering in this look. I have kind of the redness already within the eye, but I do want something to be very complimentary with that. Um, so one thing that I don't know if they sell anymore, but I love and I really enjoy cream blushes is Dandelion Dew uh, from Benef Benefit. And um, this is just such a pretty blush because... It is a cream product, and I think cream blushes really stand to look so, so natural and very, you know, fresh on the face. So I'm just going to kind of warm up some between my fingers and just kind of tap it on and see it's a really pretty kind of pinky color because I'll probably add another blush over this, a powder blush. But if I add some of this now on my cheek, it will help to really have that other blush look quite powerful and just you know i won't have to add as much this will kind of help hopefully the longevity of everything by layering things up and just really fresh beautiful looking skin too with that you can just see the dew the dandelion dew of that product so so pretty i probably will go in with something a bit more kind of red toned but it's still a beautiful start to the look. Another thing I'm going to do is go back into my Ojai and just take a little bit of that and tap it right on the tops of my cheeks so that the highlighter will be a really pretty, pretty uh, kind of pearlescent highlight as well. Just tap that right at the top por portions of the cheek, right along the temples. And if you want to, you can kind of go above your brow area as well. Now we are going to set the under eye with some Laura Mercier powder. I am not often a baker where I bake a whole lot of powder under my eyes. Just not really um, a technique that I use. I kind of just use a little bit of powder and set under my eye. So I go back under my eye and tap out any creases because I definitely do get creasing within my main kind of fold of the eye under my eye. Take some of the powder in the cap, tap it off so that I just have a little bit covering each uh, kind of on one side of the, my brush here, and this is an e.l.f. I think blush brush actually, um, or at least just some kind of powder brush. And then I just kind of tap along my under eye with the powder. And then any remnants, I go onto my forehead where I can get oily, onto my nose, and then down onto my chin. And you can already see that really mattified the under eye and made it much more not as glowy, which will help just the longevity of your makeup. So next, another kind of essential step for me is always a little bit of contour, not necessarily bronzer, but I do like to chisel out my cheekbones a bit. So I really am enjoying this e.l.f. contour palette. I kind of go in between the last two shades and I do that classic kind of three motion of up, oops, got a hair here, up within the portion of the hairline, bring it down, kind of go right under where your cheekbone hits, 
if you do the whole suck it in, you can kind of see where your natural crevice would go in and you can see pretty clearly at least um, where my cheekbone is and then where I need to add the contour. And then I bring it down underneath the jawline to help that kind of define out as well and just kind of bring that all throughout on both sides. All right, so now that we are done with that, I'm gonna go in with a highlight and I want something that is pearlescent but not something that's super beaming just because I don't wanna steal the show or anything. I just want it to look really kind of fresh and pretty. So I really actually like the highlight within this palette. I think it's really pretty, but I also already have the highlight of kind of the whole dewiness of the skin. So I don't really need to play it up too, too much. So I'm just gonna go in with a little highlight brush and take some of the highlight, tap right like this, just like that, a really pretty, pretty highlight. Right along the cheekbone, even kind of can go underneath the brow to kind of tie that whole shebang together. All right, now that we have the highlight on, we are definitely kind of glowing and glistening, which I think is super pretty. I would like to add a little bit of more blush. I think I'm gonna go into my All May Healthy Hue. This is in So Peachy. Just a little bit of this on the cheeks. I don't think the cheeks actually need too, too much, but just a little bit more color onto the cheeks here. And I kind of take it right within the apple and then kind of bring it up over where that highlight was. And this is a really pretty blush that has a little bit of kind of a, not pearlescence, because I don't think you can really see too much of that when you swatch it. I mean, it's just kind of maybe like a light sheen. So this also has kind of a bit of that fresh, glowy, dewy. Then I kind of just graze over the nose a little bit, just so that we have some continuity between the cheeks. Really pretty. Now, I think I want to go in to that lower lash line a little bit. It's really not going to be too much. I do think I kind of want to make it um, a little smoky. So I'm going to go into actually a uh, brown liner here. I won't do black, but we'll see if this brown is very brown or if it will just end up looking black. Ooh, get her out of the package. This is just an all may uh, kind of retractable liner here. So I'm just gonna go in and put this right into the waterline. I also might tight line the top as well, which will help to just kind of thicken up my lashes on the top. And tight lining on the top is getting the inner rim of the top line, which can be a little tricky. It's not the most comfortable feeling, but it can really make a difference with how kind of your lashes look and the thickness of them. So now what I'm gonna do is hop back into this little naked palette here, take a bit more of kind of like a defined brush that I used kind of on that outer edge. I'm gonna tap back into that color drunk dial and just take some right on the edge here and build out a little bit of definition. Then with that, I'm just gonna go into, mm, I think I should just go into Turn On, which is our bright shade, and bring that in. And if you want to make it a little more pinky, it might take a little bit of Young Love to connect the two of them. Now for the inner corner, because I use kind of the lightest shade on the inner portion, I don't know if much of it will kind of stand out, but I'll try. And if that's not enough, we'll go into the highlight that we used. So I'm just gonna kind of take that, place it in the inner corner. I also kind of wonder if I wanna make a little bit of smokiness out here. So I can just take Drunk Dial and kind of place a little bit right into the lash line and kind of smudge it in just on the outer even third of the lashes not creating a whole lot of kind of like depth i guess but just a little bit to help really make those lashes look thick all right and then the last little touch i'm going to go into 
hot spot, which is our lightest shade, onto a blender and just slightly blend out what we did on the bottom. Now, I do need to add my brows on. I enjoy a nice little fine uh, pencil for my brows along with the All May Brow Styler. Uh, so let me just go in and fill in my brows. All right, now before I put mascara on, I do wanna see what to do about a lip here. And what's tricky, you know, I am not a big lip person. I don't particularly love wearing lips that um, dry down, that kind of stay forever. But I do think I will at least kind of align my lips a little bit and have them get a little bit of color and then just put on a gloss. Um, because glosses are pretty easy to reapply. It's a simple kind of thing. It's just not something that I feel like I would want to worry too much about uh, having a super kind of bright, bold lip. Um, that's just kind of personally. If you don't mind kind of reapplying things, go for it. But there are obviously plenty of things uh, that you can use where you wouldn't need to reapply. So I'm just going to go in with this Exaggerate Rimmel um, liner. I think perhaps, I'm not sure, is this a little too pink for what I want to do? I do think I have a little bit of a deeper one as well. Hold on. Hold up. All right. I actually have kind of like a plum that I'm going to use. And I want to just define the lips to give them a little bit more of that, you know, defined look. So I just kind of trace around. And I probably should have exfoliated my lips, but oh well. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of uh, overdrawing my line, but obviously to each his own. Then I almost filled in all of the lip, but I left open kind of the, some spaces between both of them because those will help to look a little bit more full then. So I'm going to go in then with a gloss, and this is a L'Oreal Pro Glow Infallible Gloss. Kind of have it all meld together. Now I love the shine of this gloss. It's really, really pretty. But <clears throat> again, if you're not super into kind of like a bright, uh, lip or anything like that. Just go with more of a nude. I do think though for a special occasion a really pretty lip can set a beautiful stage uh, just for your whole look. Now I'm going to go in, curl my lashes, and add some mascara. Now the last step is to add some makeup setting spray. This is a little bit of all-nighter but it's not a whole lot in here and it's not kind of it's a travel friendly one. Ooh, I got liner all over my fingers but this one doesn't spray the best, but I would definitely get a nice setting spray to kind of set the look. Now, this is super pretty. The lip may not be for everybody. I totally understand that because it's not even really for me, but I do think it is really pretty kind of this combo together. If I wouldn't do a, this deep of a lip, I definitely would just kind of go with a regular kind of clear more so gloss or maybe a nude gloss, something like that, uh, so that I'm not super worried about what will happen to my lips if I need to eat or drink or any of that sort of thing. But I do think this all together looks very, very pretty and is very glam and just kind of evokes that emotion. I also like how hopefully this lip brings out a little bit more touch of the pinky rosiness within the eye. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this look. I I think it's just pretty. I think it's it really works and is very classic while having a little bit of a twist with a little bit more of a pinky lip and a little bit more of a pinky eye, but still simple, really. It is it is just kind of a basic, simple, smoke, smoked out eye. Well, thank you again so much for being here. Hopefully you learned something or had some fun watching me along the way. Uh, wherever you are and whatever you may be doing, I hope you are able to do something you love every single day. All right. Bye, guys.